Well, the U.S. wind energy industry blew away all previous records by installing over 8,000 megawatts of new generating capacity last year. In fact, wind projects completed in 2008 account for about 42% of the entire power producing capacity added in our nation last year. Yet some still worry whether wind can survive the economic storms of the country's financial crisis. Our Lisa Hines sat down with Larry Flowers, team leader from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, to talk about the economics of wind power. There's four major flows of, of uh, uh, economic flows into a community. The first is during construction. This is a huge impact when they, when they bring in hundreds of workers to build the wind farm. But it only lasts maybe six to nine months, but it's still uh, significant for that community. But the more important is the long term. In the long term, you have three major cash flows. You have the jobs associated with operating and maintaining those wind farms. A 200 megawatt wind farm, nominal size wind farm, might employ uh, 10 people full time. Uh, that doesn't sound like a lot, but in a rural community, that's 10 families that will be growing up, spending their money, raising their children, being part of the activities. Uh, and that's really critical. The second piece is the lease payments uh, for the land in which the wind turbines are, are put. Typically, they're talking about $3,000 to $5,000 per megawatt per year for taking maybe a half an acre out of production. So that's a very good income stream for basically uh, no risk to the, to the farmer. And then the third, which is very important, is the tax base. These are uh, capital intensive equipment. This is you know, $2 million a megawatt, uh, and that's a taxable item at the local level. And that goes into schools and, and roads and infrastructure that can help, uh, help the community. So this, there's, a big, there's a really big economic development play, we think, uh, if we really build this out to the 20%, it's a $400 billion economic development impact for the country. So what is the potential for wind energy in Oklahoma? It's almost so, it's, it's almost so big that it, it stretches credibility. You have, according to our wind map, uh, we just released at this conference, uh, 300,000 megawatts of class three wind resource and above. Our installed capacity for our country uh, is 900, maybe maybe on the order of, of uh, 100,000 megawatts for the country, electricity system. So you have, you have in capacity three times what the U.S. uses. Now, because of the wind doesn't blow all the time, when you take the fa fact that in, you could generate as much electricity here with wind as the country uses. Now you're not going to do that, okay? Because that means you have to be covering the whole panhandle and half of half of uh, uh, Oklahoma. But as as uh, the head of the energy uh, department here said after my presentation, if we just capture 10 percent, just capture 10 percent of the uh, wind resource you have here in Oklahoma, it's twice as much as you as you need in Oklahoma. So that means you can export this, and so other folks are buying electricity and basically paying for this, this resource that you have and creating the jobs and the tax base uh, and the economic development, uh, and they're paying for it, not some other state. So you have an enormous wind resource. According to our uh, economic optimization analysis for a 20% vision, Oklahoma uh, would, if everything was based on economics, which it's not, uh, would generate more wind than any other state in the country. So what's the drawback? Of wind? In the Great Plains, I don't think there is a drawback. I think Oklahoma uh, is really well positioned uh, to uh, embrace the wind uh, in the sense of the, of the economic impacts um, as well as the environmental impacts. Uh, as I mentioned this morning, uh, a really bold future for wind, a 20% vision, uh, will save four trillion gallons of water and almost a trillion gallons of that water will be saved in Texas and Oklahoma. And water uh, is critical for agriculture. And right now we have a train wreck that's coming down toward us, which is we have growing loads in the West. We have ethanol production, which is a lot of water, consumes a lot of water per gallon of, uh, of, uh, of ethanol. 
we have uh, power plants coming on, thermal power plants coming on that require a lot of water. The thermal power plants use more water than agriculture in our country. Uh, and so water is a big water savings. Uh, there's going to be carbon legislation. The, the Obama administration has committed to that. Carbon legislation is going to add to the cost of fossil fuels, making wind even a, even a better deal. But most importantly, I believe, and this is what I think T. Boone Pickens' uh, main theme that resonates so well in rural America is energy security. This is, this is a resource that we're gonna have in our backyards forever and not developing it uh, and continuing to import uh, oil and natural gas um, seems uh, almost non-patriotic. So it's, a, it's, a, it's really uh, an opportunity for America to look toward itself and its resources uh, and at the same time helping rural America and its economic development. And if 2008 is any indication, wind energy is an economic and job creation dynamo. Currently, about 85,000 people are employed in the wind industry, up from about 50,000 just one year ago. Now, if you head to our website at okhorizon.com, you can visit a classroom where the next generation of wind workers are being trained. Plus, we have part of my conversation with oilman and wind proponent Boone Pickens about why he believes wind is the new oil. To see both of these stories, simply go to okhorizon.com and click on Value Added.